All right, well, it's the time of year where I'm sure a lot of folks will be celebrating the holidays and giving or receiving gifts. And some of those gifts may be new streaming boxes, smart TVs, game consoles, and whatnot. I think a lot of people are looking at the options out there and deciding that 2021 is the year to cut the cord. And that brings us to the topic of today's video, which is what are the popular streaming services available in Canada? I think everyone has heard about the big names out there, but there are other options out there too. Maybe there's something new for you to discover here in this quick video. I recently unboxed and set up a Roku stream bar, which is kind of like a streaming box and a sound bar in one. And I think it's awesome. And it got me exploring a few streaming services that I may not have tried, which somewhat inspired this video. Okay, now one very quick request. If you enjoy the video today, do me a favor and click that like button. It does help quite a bit. All right, let's dive in. Let's start with sports. Fubo TV is a streaming service that focuses primarily on channels that distribute live sports. Mainly what you're getting here is the sports. Okay, you get soccer leagues and competitions from Spain, France, South America, and Turkey. Basketball from leagues in Portugal and Spain. Hockey from Switzerland. You also get a ton of MMA content from the Fight Network. Plus, you get access to MLB Network Canada. And besides live sports, you also get access to TV shows and movies. Most of the non-sports related content can be found on the Paramount Network. The service heavily focuses on live TV, which is pretty cool. They've actually got sort of a TV guide you can browse through and select which channel you wanna watch based on what's on. However, they seem to have very little on-demand content. There is some, but not much. Most of what they have on display is clearly cheap B-rated content, in, in my opinion, and made for TV movies. But one cool thing is that you do get 30 hours of cloud DVR, so you can record content that will be airing on any of the networks on the service. So the bottom line here is you should only get Fubo TV if you have a special interest in one of the leagues or the sports that they have on the service. Stuff like MMA, baseball, or some of the soccer leagues that they offer, but it's not worth it, you know, if you're interested in some of their TV and movies, because there's just not much there. Sportsnet Now. Most people already know about Sportsnet. It's been a Canadian sports staple for years, at least on the cable networks. Sportsnet is owned by Rogers, has locked up the rights to the majority of NHL games played by Canadian teams, and Sportsnet now brings all of Sportsnet content across all channels right to your phone, tablet, or TV over the internet. With Sportsnet, you're gonna get a ton of NHL, also a ton of Toronto Blue Jays, and even quite a bit of the Toronto Raptors. You will also get soccer, rugby, and a host of other sports. So what's the difference between Sportsnet Now and Sportsnet Now Plus? Well, it comes down to a couple of different things. For one, you get over 500 NHL games instead of around 300 in a regular season. And second, there's a bunch of other leagues that they offer outside of their standard channel set, such as Bundesliga Soccer, Super League Rugby, and IndyCar Series. My advice is that if you're looking for hockey for your home team, they do offer all 82 games for the Canucks, Oilers, Flames, and the Maple Leafs, and you can get all of your team's games on the standard plan. And you can get the Raptors, and the Jays. So really, if you want even more hockey, that's when you would wanna to go to Sportsnet Now Plus. Now I've been using Sportsnet Now for a couple of years now, and I've been really satisfied with it. My one complaint is that they don't have a Roku app. They offer their app on most platforms like Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, Android TVs, and even Amazon Fire TV. So hopefully they get their app in more places soon. Sportsnet's direct competitor is probably TSN Direct, which is 
Canada's other major sports network. Like Sportsnet, you can get all of TSN's content over the internet on a multitude of screens. TSN is also a home for hockey, featuring games with the Leafs, Senators, Canadians, and the Jets. Plus, TSN has exclusive coverage of the World Juniors. You will also get the Raptors, MLS soccer, including Toronto FC and Whitecaps FC, and you'll get coverage of NFL and CFL games and a host of other sports. Now, TSN Direct is on even less platforms than Sportsnet, which is quite unfortunate. You can get TSN Direct on your iPhone or Android, on your Xbox, sorry PlayStation fans, Samsung Smart TV, Apple TV, and on your computer. They will need to step up their game in this area for sure. Then there is the zone. The zone is D-A-Z-N, another really big sports streaming service in Canada and everything you can't get on the other networks I just mentioned, you can get on the zone, including NFL, Premier League and MLB. The Zone is the only way to get unlimited access to every NFL game with NFL Game Pass, NFL Red Zone, and NFL Sunday Ticket. Now you can catch The Zone on Roku, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, and Amazon Fire. Now let's shift over to TV shows and movies and where you can stream them. Most Canadians should know about the CBC, which is government funded and specifically exists for the purposes of ensuring the continuation of Canadian TV and movie content in a world dominated by Hollywood. But many people don't know about CBC Gem, which is CBC's free streaming service. Yes, you heard that correctly, it's free. And it's also pretty good, which is a combination you don't see too often. Now, it's true, CBC Gem does have a paid version for $4.99 a month, but the main point of doing that is to get rid of the ads on the on-demand content, and you do get a couple of other perks. But if you don't mind the ads, you really don't have to pay for the service. You get all of CBC's current shows and films, kids shows, as well as past seasons on demand. You also get your local CBC station stream live. It's really a no brainer and I highly recommend it. CBC Gem is available on Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire, and your phone and tablet. Prime Video is the streaming service that I constantly forget I have. I think it's because I just don't think of Amazon as a streaming service. Prime is the way I order online goods from Amazon and I get one to two day shipping. But then every once in a while, I'll hear people talking about a new show on Prime and that always leads me back there to take a look. Prime Video is a direct competitor to Netflix. They've got all kinds of licensed content as well as kids content and they've got plenty of original content, some of which is really good. Some notable examples are Jack Ryan, The Expanse, The Boys, The Grand Tour, Truth Seekers and many, many more. Amazon Prime is available on every platform you can think of while most of the content is included in your Prime membership. You do have to pay extra if you want to take advantage of optional Prime video channels such as Stars, Stack TV, PayU, and others. Apple TV Plus is Apple's very own streaming service that launched just over a year ago. The service runs at $5.99 and can be used by the whole family. If you're using Apple's family sharing feature. Apple has provided a year of the service for free, included with any recent purchase of an Apple device. When it first launched, the catalog of shows and movies was actually pretty thin, but over the last year it has grown considerably. You certainly won't ever get as much content as on the bigger streaming services, but Apple's concept is to produce or purchase rights to fewer, higher quality, pieces of content. Some of the more notable exclusives on Apple TV Plus this year have been Greyhound, which is a World War II naval thriller movie, and Ted Lasso, a comedy series starring Jason Sudeikis. Apple's done a good job over the last year of rolling their service out across all platforms. You should be able to get it on almost any smart TV, streaming box, or game console. 
Then there is Disney Plus. The buildup and anticipation to the launch of Disney Plus was palpable in 2019. Everyone knows Disney has a massive catalog of quality content and have been rapidly increasing that through acquisitions over the years of the Star Wars franchise and the Marvel Cinematic Universe and 21st Century Fox. Disney Plus was finally launched in November 2019. Disney Plus has somewhere in the neighborhood of 7,000 individual TV shows along with 500 or so movies. Now that sounds like a lot, but it's definitely less than its main rival, Netflix. But what you get is access to some of the most loved stories out there. Disney is just getting started in some of the original content for Star Wars and Marvel for example. Mandalorian has been a huge hit for them and they're bringing something like 11 Star Wars and 10 Marvel series over the next couple of years. Disney Plus is also available on every platform you can think of. CBS All Access is all about shows from, you guessed it, CBS. That's the main benefit of getting on this platform. It offers original content, recently aired shows on CBS's broadcast channels, and content from the Viacom CBS library. And this is a great option if you've been a fan of their primetime TV series in the past. I've personally watched a ton of NCIS over the years, and with CBS All Access, I can get the entire catalog. You've got other hit shows like Hawaii Five-O, SEAL Team, and things like Survivor. You should be able to pick up CBS All Access on most platforms. Crave is a Canadian streaming service owned by Bell Media. Crave is the primary outlet for Bell's exclusive Canadian rights to original programming from HBO, HBO Max, Showtime, Comedy Central, and Stars. However, the most Up-to-date seasons of HBO and Star's programs and most movies are only available through the add-on subscriptions. The movies plus HBO add-on costs an additional $9.99. The Star's add-on costs an additional $5.99. Crave is available on most platforms, except it doesn't appear they have an LG WebOS app yet. So watch out for that if you have an LG TV. Okay, if you haven't heard of Netflix, you probably have never heard of YouTube either, in which case I have no idea how you found this video. Netflix is certainly great. They have tons of content and are available on literally every platform. But as you can tell from the rest of this video, they aren't the only game in town anymore. And to be honest, I'm getting somewhat annoyed because they keep raising their prices with Netflix there's actually a few different options for the subscription. You can get their basic plan for $9.99 a month, which gives you standard definition programming, and you can only stream on one screen at a time. But if you bump up to the standard plan, you get HD content and the ability to stream on two screens at once. And if you go up to the premium plan, you get ultra HD content and the ability to stream on four devices at once. Netflix churns out a lot of content, but some of the notable content they've put out this year include The Queen's Gambit, Cobra Kai, The Crown, Tiger King, and the list goes on. I have to be honest, I never really considered YouTube to be a streaming service, but I've been heavy on the YouTube consumption for a couple of years now. I often find it's hard to get into new TV shows and it always feels like a massive time investment. That's why historically I've actually really liked movies for their sort of one and done type of approach. But I discovered the joy of watching YouTube videos sometime in 2018, 2019. It's easy just to flip it on and immediately find something that interests you. And most videos are you know, anywhere from five to 20 minutes. And so it's not a huge investment. But if you do have the time, it's easy to get into another video and then another and so on until you've spent a couple hours watching. I think technically YouTube has the option of watching TV shows and movies as well, but that's not what most people are doing. Oh, and I know YouTube is free, but I really prefer the premium experience. It's completely worth the monthly fee to get rid of the ads. I also get YouTube music included in the price, 
but I really only use YouTube. I believe having a premium subscription pays the content creators too, which is kind of a win-win in my mind. As you know, you can get YouTube on any platform you can think of. Some of my favorite content creators are Andre Jick, Graham Stephan, Economics Explained, Doug DeMiro, Marcus Brownlee, Wendover Productions, Ben Sullins, Renee Ritchie, and so many more. I'll link to them all down below for you. Wow. We just explored 12 streaming services and there's others I didn't mention. Maybe I forgot your favorite streaming site. If I did, comment down below so everyone can see what it is. And don't forget to tell us what you like most about it. I think I touched on most of the major ones available here in Canada. I've been a cord cutter for a few years now, so I'm no stranger to what's out there. There's two things I know for sure when it comes to streaming options. One, there's absolutely no need for cable anymore. Everything you can get on cable, you can get on streaming sites. And two, that doesn't really matter because if you get all the streaming services you want with all the content you want, you're gonna end up paying just as much, if not more, than you would with cable. That's kind of a downer to end on, but be sure to check out some of these options if you haven't already. And with that, click that like button if you enjoyed the video today and subscribe for more Technology Paul. We'll see you in the next one.